There is a couple of things I love from this keyboard. One being that the layout is standard, which is awesome because it makes replacing the keycaps very easy. Two is that the font is not the gamer font that you get from the K70. If only if they hide the HyperX logos, then this keyboard would truly be complete. The light strip that's above the F key gives this keyboard that extra bit of flair. And it reminds me of the K95, which is a much more expensive board than this. I don't like how the media controls are on the right and it's lit with LEDs and the lighting control and gaming buttons on the left and it's not lit. It doesn't bring balance to the force. It feels like balance is off. And I like the floating key design, which is the same from the K70. And I like having a volume wheel and dedicated media controls. I was never a big fan of having function button than having to hold the function button while pushing the F keys for media controls. The overall footprint of the board feels small. Just because I recently reviewed the Rocket Rios RGB and this size feels right to me. It's not those really really small keyboards that are made for gaming and it's not those really big keyboards with buttons that I typically wouldn't use. It offers this sweet middle ground that makes the keyboard enjoyable to use and it's also easy on the eyes which is a plus. And of course, you can find it in the K70 as well. The LED on top of the switch, which leads me to believe I am hitting the LED every single time I type. Reliability might be an issue, but I haven't met someone that used their mechanical keyboard for more than two years. I notice people tend to switch keyboards pretty quickly despite one of the reasons on buying the keyboards in the first place is that it would last a long, 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 long time. Thankfully, we have the Cherry Stabilizer, which is awesome because it makes replacing the keys so much easier. If you don't replace the keys or clean your keyboard, then you don't know and you don't care what stabilizers you have but I do and I know that there are people that do as well having cherry stabilizers is just the best in terms of cleaning and replacing your keycaps the keycaps are the typical thin ABS keycaps that you would get with these mainstream keyboard manufacturer which isn't a surprise here at least it's nice and clean except the ones where they rush during the manufacturing process and have pink smear all over the keycaps. At this price point, I guess it's fair. And since they are copying the K70, then I should expect nothing less. The wrist rest is about the same as the K70, which isn't saying much because I didn't like the wrist rest for the K70 to begin with. I'm sure you guys have all known that. It's made of this coating on top of hard plastic which doesn't feel that good over a long period of time and i rather they just scrap the wrist rest and use the extra material cost on something else or if they were to make a wrist rest then they should do something like razor where the wrist rest is magnetic and it has soft pillowy foam and the plastic hooks will break very easily if you pull too hard. The flip up feet do have rubber on them which is nice for keeping the board planted in both positions. There are these dents that gives the board a bit more style but I don't see the practical side on having these dents. You do however 
get a legit USB pass-through, which is nice, but you lose detachable cable, which makes sense. The cable is braided, which is nice, but the USB tip is in gold, so in some way, HyperX give us, in other way, HyperX take us away. The keyboard feels as good as the K70 in terms of strokes and tactility. They are basically using the same switch on the same metal surface, which I believe it would be safe to say that if you were to blindfold me, you hand me this, and you hand me the K70, and I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. This is a good thing, because the K70 brown switch types fantastically, and I find myself coming up with reasons to start typing, which is a great sign for a keyboard. The feel is, again, it's the sweet spot between not too heavy and not too light. I wouldn't want to say it's perfect because I know there are always another keyboard that will try to one-up this one. This retails for $109.99 while the K70 retails for $129.99, making this keyboard the winner because of the price difference and the board being exactly the same thing so why pay more when you can pay less as a gaming keyboard it is terrible for mmo gamers because it does not have macro capabilities for fps gamer this keyboard is perfect because it is very comfortable to hold those keys for long durations for RTS Gamer, it's about meh because the keys aren't too light where you can easily double tap and it's also not super heavy to the point where you won't be making too many mistakes. Now, for those of you that are long time viewers of this channel, you guys know I usually don't recommend keyboards. Which is why I'm thinking of going for a more neutral approach is that is that something you guys want or would you guys rather I stay very heavily opinionated let me know in the comments anyways I would recommend this keyboard because it hits almost all of the checkboxes I know that they announce that they will have a RGB version of this keyboard with MX Blues. That's it. The moment when that keyboard hits the market, you will see it on the channel. Anyways, if you like the content, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more awesome content.